Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. The explosions came just after midnight in a residential neighborhood of Kharkiv. According to police, Russia fired two missiles at the city, then attacked with drones during rescue operations. I was sleeping. The explosion woke me up. The fuel station was on fire. They yelled at me, get out. But I stood there instead. There was another explosion and everything started falling. The attack came as Ukraine's Air Force reported multiple Russian drone attacks across the country in recent days. On Friday, a Russian strike on the southern city of Zaporizhia killed four people and wounded more than 20. As in Kharkiv, local authorities also accused Russia of bombing the same spot twice in order to kill the rescue workers on the scene. The Russian army said it intended to target a Ukrainian aircraft engine manufacturer, which it said was being used for military purposes. From March 31st to April 5th, in response to the Kyiv regime's attempts to damage facilities in Russia's oil, gas and energy sectors, the Russian armed forces carried out 39 group strikes using high-precision ground and air-launched weapons and drones. In addition to attacks on Russian refineries, Ukraine has also struck an air base in the Rostov region. On Friday, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky visited fortifications in Cherniyiv. Zelensky has been calling on the West to continue its military aid as Russia gains ground against a Ukrainian army short of soldiers and ammunition. In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3 Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. A day of national mourning as the coffins made their way through the streets of Tehran and a hero's farewell for five of the seven men killed in Syria. All were Revolutionary Guards, including one of Iran's highest-ranking officers, Brigadier General Mohammad Reza Zahedi, in charge of Iran's Quds forces in Lebanon and Syria. The public procession ceremony was held alongside annual Quds Day events. It's been held every year since the Islamic Revolution in 1979, on the final Friday of Ramadan to show solidarity with the Palestinian people. Monday's attack in Damascus is being seen as a major blow to the guards. They've suffered 18 losses so far in Syria alone since the war on Gaza began in October. The bombing of the consulate section of the Iranian embassy in Damascus marks a new stage in what's described as a shadow war between Iran and Israel. The Zionist regime must know it can't achieve security by carrying out destabilizing actions. The Zionist regime will be punished. It knows what will happen and is within our reach. Iran's supreme leader said a final prayer over the coffins on Thursday evening. I offer both my congratulations and condolences to the families of these martyrs. I hope that God grants patience to the mothers, fathers, wives and children of these martyrs. 
The latest attack on high-ranking members of the Revolutionary Guards is seen by many as a test for the leadership here. How they respond could determine if Israel will continue its campaign of assassinations in the region. During the past six months, armed groups backed by Iran have used drones and missiles to target Israel as well as shipping in the Red Sea and U.S. forces in the region. While Iran launched ballistic missiles at a target in Erbil in northern Iraq in January, the Iranian military has not yet directly targeted Israel. But after vowing revenge following the Damascus strike, that could soon change, creating a tense atmosphere here for many. Well, now to some breaking news. CBS News has learned that U.S. intelligence believes Iran is preparing a major attack in retaliation for Monday's airstrike by Israel on the Iranian consulate in Damascus. Now, the U.S. has warned Iran in writing not to attack U.S. personnel and facilities. CBS's David Martin is at the Pentagon with these new developments. Iran's supreme leader held funeral prayers for the Revolutionary Guards killed by an Israeli airstrike, as both the U.S. and Israel braced for a retaliatory attack. U.S. officials tell CBS News Iran is making preparations to launch a swarm of drones and missiles timed around the upcoming end of Ramadan. The target is still unknown, but Israel is reinforcing its air defenses. The ways of retaliating can come from anywhere, including Iran, Israel's defense minister said, and we are preparing to face this matter. I think Iran will cast about for a uh, relatively vulnerable target, perhaps an embassy somewhere abroad, something like that, maybe a ship at sea. Retired general and former Mideast commander Frank McKenzie says Monday's Israeli strike against the Iranian diplomatic compound in the Syrian capital of Damascus was the most significant Israeli attack against Iranians since the war in Gaza began. It's a very precisely directed strike that took out key leadership. Uh, and, and I think it's hurt them quite a bit. Two senior generals were among the seven killed in what Iran considered to be an attack on its sovereign territory. It caught the U.S. as much by surprise as it did Iran, even though it was carried out by an American-built F-35 stealth fighter. The U.S. was quick to disavow any connection. We were not notified by the Israelis about their um, strike or the intended target of their strike in Damascus. Still, Iran has vowed to hold the U.S. as well as Israel accountable, and American troops throughout the Middle East have been put on high alert that they too might be attacked in coming days. As we continue to watch the Muslim world unite against Israel, the Bible tells us there are four possible prophecies on the verge of finding fulfillment. Isaiah 17, 1 and 14, the burden against Damascus. Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city, and it will be a ruinous heap. Then behold, at eventide, trouble, and before the morning he is no more. This is the portion of those who plunder us and the lot of those who rob us. Isaiah 17, 9. In that day his strong cities will be as a forsaken bow and an uppermost branch, which they left because of the children of Israel, and there will be desolation. Isaiah 17, 1 and 14 tell us Damascus will be destroyed in a single night. Verse 9 suggests that it is the children of Israel who caused this desolation, possibly with a nuclear weapon. Jeremiah 49, 34 through 37. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet against Elam. In the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the foremost of their might. Against Elam I will bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven, and scatter them toward all those winds. There shall be no nations where the outcasts of Elam will not go, for I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies and before those who seek their life. I will bring disaster upon them, my fierce anger, says the Lord, and I will send the sword after them until I have consumed them. In this prophecy, Jeremiah predicts that Iran will be struck at the foremost place of its might, which today could infer an attack upon its nuclear program. One of Iran's most strategic and vulnerable nuclear targets is Bashar nuclear reactor located in the heart of ancient Elam. Jeremiah says that Iran has fiercely angered the Lord, and that provokes the Lord to cause a severe disaster inside of Iran. Israel seeks to prevent Iran from becoming a nuclear nation. Perhaps this alludes to a nuclear disaster caused from a strike upon Iran's Bushehr nuclear reactor.
There is a prophecy written by Asaph the seer that many end-time teachers believe has yet to find fulfillment. In this prophecy, a confederation of Muslim nations have taken crafty counsel against the Jewish people in Israel in order to destroy them as we read in Psalm 83, 1-8. Do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace and do not be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make a tumult, and those who hate you have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. For they have consulted together with one consent. They form a confederacy against you. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagrites, Gabal, Ammon, and Amalek, Philistia with the inhabitants of Tyre, Assyria also has joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot. Ezekiel 38, 1-9 The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn you about and put hooks into your jaws, and I will bring you out and all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed in full armor, a great host, all of them with buckler and shield, wielding swords, Persia, Cush, and Put are with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his hordes, Beth Garma from the uttermost parts of the north with all his hordes. Many peoples are with you. Be ready and keep ready, you and all your hosts that are assembled about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will be mustered. In the latter years you will go against the land that is restored from war, the land whose people were gathered from many peoples upon the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste. Its people were brought out from the peoples and now dwell securely, all of them. You will advance, coming on like a storm. You will be like a cloud covering the land, you and all your hordes, and many peoples with you. These are the modern day nations listed in Ezekiel 38 and 39 who will be mustered in the latter years to attack Israel, Russia, Iran, Turkey, Libya, Sudan, and Ethiopia. God tells us exactly what will happen to Iran, Russia, Turkey, and the many peoples with you when they attack Israel in Ezekiel 38, 18 through 23, and 39 to 7 and 8. And it will come to pass at the same time. When God comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my fury will show in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath I have spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. So that the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the field, all creeping things that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. The mountains shall be thrown down, the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother, and I will bring him into judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. And I will turn thee back, and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts, and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them profane my holy name any more. Then the nation shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Surely it is coming, and it shall be done, says the Lord God. This is the day of which I have spoken. I've been informed by top-ranking military officials that Israel has been unable to launch even a single plane in defense. As I stand here, Fighter planes are exploding in midair. They're crashing and falling to the ground without any explanation. And while no one can seem to give me any reason for why this is happening, I can tell you this. This all-out, unprecedented attempt to destroy Israel appears to be failing. God is the one who fights this battle for Israel. He does it for two reasons. To make his holy name known in the midst of his people Israel, that the nation shall know that he is the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Zechariah 2, 8, and 9. For thus says the Lord of hosts, He sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoiled for their servants. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Israel is precious to Almighty God, the apple of his eye. He is simply saying, You touch my chosen nation Israel, you poke me in the eye. Is Vladimir Putin, the infamous Gog of Magog, that the prophet Ezekiel warned would come on the scene in the last days and lead a coalition of nations to destroy Israel? 
Or could Gog be Recep Tayyip Erdogan, another dictator who is fast gaining power and dominance in the Middle East? Biblical scholars can't agree if the prophet Ezekiel was talking about a last day's assault on Israel being led by Russia or Turkey. Many popular Bible teachers claim that Gog will come from Russia, while others claim that Ezekiel's prophecy actually points to Turkey. Whether Gog is from Russia or Turkey, both nations are presently being led by undisputed dictators who could each very easily fit the Gog profile. Zimbabwe has been hit by a severe drought, destroying crops on which millions of people rely for food. It's another example of the impact of climate extremes worldwide. A threat facing the whole planet, say scientists, who warn that action is needed immediately to avert long-term disaster. For those who become victims of the impact of climate change, it may already be too late. Man-made catastrophes such as the wars in Gaza and Ukraine are in sharp focus internationally, reflecting the horrors of conflict. But while attention is quite properly given to these political disasters, is enough being given to the global threat from climate change? Does the world's attention need to be refocused? Dry fields and wasted crops. A severe drought in South Africa has left 20 million people going hungry. After Malawi and Zambia, Zimbabwe has declared a state of disaster too, leaving a region that was once an agricultural powerhouse and grain exporter needing emergency aid to feed its own people. Our food situation is difficult. We only eat once a day because we have nothing in the fields, not a single grain. Everything has dried up in the drought. We also have problems with sourcing water. El Nino, the naturally occurring climate pattern that warms parts of the Pacific Ocean every two years, has a major impact on world weather. In South Africa, it typically causes below average rainfall. But this year, it brought the worst drought in decades. The United Nations says major food growing areas in Malawi, Mozambique, Namibia, Zambia and Zimbabwe have seen some of the lowest rainfall in 40 years. The crop production is very, very much affected by the current El Nino situation after the, the first rains in January. But since then, there has been no rain. Yeah, so we're really uh, dreading to see the results of the second crop and livestock assessment because it will likely tell us uh, about the very, very poor production during this year. Scientists say climate change is raising sea levels, melting ice sheets, causing more intense storms and frequent wildfires. For the first time in January, the world breached the benchmark warning level of a global increase of 1.5 degrees centigrade. Experts predict a further supercharging of global warming from effects such as El Nino delivering record-breaking temperatures. Last year was already the hottest on record globally. Droughts, floods and other extreme weather is expected as global temperatures continue to rise. Venezuela is already battling a record number of wildfires. Its Amazon region recorded nearly 6,000 fires in March alone. But the impact of rising global temperatures goes beyond human life. It's wreaking havoc on wetlands in northern Albania. The Vane Lagoon is seeing a steep decline in the number of migratory birds. Rising water temperatures, rising sea levels and other phenomena have led to a decline in fish stocks, including eels, in all lagoons in Albania, as in the rest of Europe. Conflicts and climate crises are affecting the lives of millions around the world. But the urgent need to tackle climate change seems to be overshadowed by wars in Gaza and Ukraine, as well as other geopolitical unrest. This has been part of a long planned effort to fulfill the World Economic Forum's vision of, you know, you'll own nothing, be happy. We already see the city of Oxford putting in 15 minute cities, hearkening back to the days of East Germany with travel restrictions. Uh -huh. Let me see your papers. You cannot leave your sector. That's what we're dealing with here. This is spreading. And it, and it started in Europe, by the way, going after the food supply, going after high yield agriculture and animal agriculture. And guess what? John Kerry announced last week that agriculture is now in the climate targets in the United States. So they're going to go for food first and then our transportation. They're already banning gas powered cars, creating yeah. intentional car shortages. Every part of this climate agenda is somehow inconveniencing literally everybody on Earth. So why do people go along with it when none of their predictions have come true? 
Well, it's, this is almost like a religious fanaticism. It's, a, it's the idea of we have to do this. The United Nations cult. tops. In fact, you can't even disagree with the UN. They did a partnership with Google. They own <clears throat> the science, according. So they're doing it in order to achieve this utopian vision. And it's like they're imposing a religion, a, uh, a, a, a austerity upon the rest of us. And by golly, they're going to make it happen. They're collapsing our energy, our food our transportation, yeah. our free speech. And there, this is all through corporate government collusion, mostly throughout any, without an ounce of democracy, just like COVID, when yeah. they closed schools and churches and work and or issued stay-at-home orders and canceled weddings, funerals, and medical procedures. All of that was done without a single vote. It was done because the, the, you know, the a virus demanded it. Well, now they changed the word virus to the climate demands it. Romans 1, 18 through 25. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lusts of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Romans chapter 1 is a description of ungodly, unrighteous, foolish men and their attempt to rationalize away evidence of the true God. It perfectly describes the writings of Charles Darwin and the evolution lie. The climate change cultists have exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator. These foolish men deify Mother Earth for the sake of ecological purity. Climate change is being used to destroy national sovereignty and autonomy in order to bring in a one-world government headed by the Antichrist. Psalm 18.7 Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken because he was angry. Just two days after the world was stunned by that catastrophic earthquake in Taiwan comes a quake right here in New York City. At 1023 a.m., the Big Apple was rattled by a 4.8 magnitude earthquake with tremors felt up and down the East Coast from Philadelphia to Boston. Stephen Fabian has more on the quake that shook 42 million people. New York City was stunned by a 4.8 magnitude earthquake that rattled the nation's largest city. The entire building just moved. This is crazy. Earthquake just shaped my nothing just now. At the United Nations headquarters, the tremors interrupted a Security Council meeting on Gaza. Education is... You're, you're making the ground shake. Look, so the chandelier in this New York City home swung as the earth shook. It felt like somebody was was just shaking the house back and forth. Networks interrupted programming with the breaking news. When we just had a 4.8, did you all feel it? Yes. You felt the earthquake. WCBS meteorologist Lonnie Quinn came on the air in pajamas. I am in my pajamas. I was sound asleep. It woke me up out of my bed here in Westport, Connecticut. I've been born and bred in Connecticut, and I have never felt anything like this. The Fox Business Channel studio shook during a live interview. I've got to cut it short because something very unusual has just happened here in the New York area. They're really unusual. The earthquake's epicenter was in Lebanon, New Jersey, about 50 miles west of Manhattan. All of a sudden, you heard, and the whole building started shaking. And we all looked at each other, and we all ran out the front door. This mom was feeding her baby when she had to drop everything and flee. Rain cameras at this house, 15 miles from the epicenter, captured the terrifying moment. And this was the scene at a New Jersey coffee shop as patrons reacted in fear. Pets were often the first to sound the alarm.
<laughs> Residents of this multifamily home in Newark were evacuated because it was leaning into the house next door. This is the biggest one, the strongest one that has been on that fault line uh, in 240 years. So you're talking before even George Washington was president, before he got sworn into office. The Statue of Liberty was closed as a precaution, but there are no reports of damage to the city's infrastructure. Still, the danger may not be over. New York Governor Kathy Hochul is warning there could be aftershocks to come. It could be over, but also there could be another effect, and we have to be prepared for that and, and warn New Yorkers to be particularly vigilant in the, the days uh, following an original earthquake. Tremors from the earthquake were felt as far as 200 miles away. It's a school day in Taiwan, but it's too dangerous for pupils of this school in Hualien to return to class. Repairs needed here could cost more than $6 million, and this is just one of dozens of public buildings damaged by an earthquake on Wednesday. Politicians say the government is working towards rebuilding infrastructure and supporting small businesses. When the disaster comes, it's bipartisan. Everyone, like, work on it and see what we could do. I think that's showing the spirit of Taiwan. Some of the loved ones of those who died this week held a vigil at a funeral home. And at least 200 people who lost their homes are staying in emergency shelters and working out what to do next. It was terrifying for sure, terrifying. Our first time seeing, uh, experiencing this kind of earthquake, yeah. The, the security staff told me that it seems like the apartment's not livable anymore. Despite the 7.2 magnitude strength of the earthquake, the damage is relatively contained. Experts say that's thanks to Taiwan's disaster preparedness, including its strict building codes. But some residential buildings are damaged beyond repair. Experts are still assessing the earthquake damage. This apartment building was one of the most severely damaged. It needs to be demolished before it completely collapses. Hotels are also affected by the disaster. Tourism is a major contributor to the local economy. The hotel is across from the collapsing building. We were fully booked for the holiday, but because of the earthquake, we had to refund all the guests. And we don't yet know the damage to the hotel itself. Search and rescue workers are still trying to find some missing people, believed to be on a hiking trail, who haven't been heard from since the earthquake. They are also evacuating hundreds of stranded people. Most are now in a hotel and some in a church and a school. Residents of this building are unsure whether they will be able to return home. The beams and columns of this building are severely cracked. This building is marked as dangerous. Inspectors said it was safe enough for residents to briefly enter to collect some belongings. The task feel uh, unprecedented and in enormous. But if you break into a small step, everything I can handle. She retrieved some documents and a blanket sewn by her grandfather. Now she can only wait to find out whether her home will have to be demolished. Luke 2111, and there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. Isaiah 24, 19 through 21. The earth is violently broken. The earth is split open. The earth is shaken exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall totter like a hut. Its transgression shall be heavy upon it, and it will fall and not rise again. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord will punish on high the host of exalted ones, and on the earth the kings of the earth. Our next story is about bird flu. From Antarctica to America, it's spreading everywhere. In the South Pole, thousands of penguins are dead. In America, thousands of cattle are infected. And not just that, even humans are affected now. A man in Texas has been infected with the virus. It was after he came in touch with sick cows. Does that mean the virus could spread to more humans? America's top disease control body says no. That's the CDC. It believes the rate of transmission to humans is still low, but scientists are urging caution. Could bird flu become the next pandemic? Antarctica, it's one of the harshest environments on Earth. Yet in this pristine wilderness, life continues to flourish. But that life is now facing a hidden threat the H5N1 virus, commonly known as the bird flu virus. It reached the region last year, and since then it has been killing the wildlife there. The biggest victim are penguins. Last month, a scientific exploration found at least 532 dead Adelie penguins. Many of them were frozen solid, 
others were covered in snow. While the team couldn't tally all the carcasses, they believe thousands more could be dead. But it's not just Antarctica that's affected. Avian influenza is sweeping the United States. The first cases emerged in 2021. It was detected in wild migratory birds. Soon it spread to poultry farms. In 2023, the US went through its worst outbreak of the bird flu. Now it's spreading to other mammals like dairy cows. It has infected herds of cows across the state. But the problem is not just limited to cows. A person has tested positive for bird flu. This was in the state of Texas. He is said to have come in contact with sick cows. Which brings us to the question, should you be worried? 873 humans have been infected with H5N1 avian flu in 20 years. 458 have died. That's a fatality rate of more than 50%. India reported its first case and death due to H5N1 in 2021. So can it cause the next pandemic? For now, avian influenza is not on the WHO's priority list. It's not part of pathogens with pandemic potential. The CDC, or Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, too, say the risk remains low. But scientists have called for more tests. The need of the hour is containing the spread. More people need to be tested, more animals need to be vaccinated, and interaction with infected animals should be monitored. One case may not be enough to trigger a pandemic, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Even people who do not believe in Jesus Christ and the end times know something is very wrong with our world. As of late, I have been hearing from so many people that 2024 will be the year when America goes over the edge. We are on the verge of World War III. Our financial system is teetering on the brink of disaster. Homelessness is rising at the fastest pace ever recorded. Drug and alcohol abuse are off the charts. Lawlessness runs unchecked. Food banks are facing unprecedented demand for their services. And it's not just happening in the United States, it's happening all over the world. I believe that 2024 will be the most chaotic election year in the entire history of our nation, with many saying the U.S. is heading for civil war. All of this is happening in the global framework of wars and rumors of wars, pestilence, famine and natural disasters, all of which are happening more frequently and more intensely. A perfect storm is raging all around us. Billions of people have become deeply concerned about what the immediate future will look like. The global agenda for a one world government, a one world financial system, and a one world religion are already set in place. All the world needs now is for the Antichrist to make his appearance onto the world stage. All of this can only point to one fact. The rapture, the seven year tribulation, and the Antichrist are just a heartbeat away from becoming reality. The Bible warns of the times we are living in, and God through his grace and mercy has showed us the end from the beginning. And now his watchmen are blowing the trumpet. Jesus is coming for the believer. No more pain or sorrow, but for the unbeliever, there will be misery and grief. Buckle up and hold on tight. By looking at world events, it seems probable 2024 will be the year when everything converges and with it the rapture, the seven year tribulation, and the revealing of the Antichrist. Luke 2136. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Are you ready for what comes next? The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. 
call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.